Oh boy, this is certainly not the angle that I thought we would be talking about in regards to this player and the Montreal Canadiens in the year 2024. I think if you've clicked on this video, you already know who it is we're talking about today. We are heading over to Philadelphia and talking about 7th overall pick Matvey Mishkov, a guy whom a lot of Montreal Canadiens fans really wanted to see get drafted by the Habs. And for good reason. I mean, Mishkov was kind of the neck-and-neck -neck guy with Connor Bedard for the majority of the early 2020s. Heading into the 2023 draft, he was a guy that had a rough season, mostly because of his non-usage with SKA St. Petersburg. But eventually, rounding out his season with HK Sochi, he was a very effective player. He rose his stock once again and proved that he debatably could have been seen as the top prospect outside of Bedard. But because of the Russian factor, because of the insecurities with his future, because of the contract he has gotten with SKA St. Petersburg, a bunch of teams passed on him in the top picks of the draft. Which is why he slipped to 7th, it's why the Flyers took him in that spot. But in this video today, we're talking about how, apparently, Mishkov could very well be helping out the Montreal Canadiens. And it's not too direct at all, it's more so of a sort of domino effect here. But I wanted to let y'all in on this because it was interesting and I did think this does open the door to a fairly intriguing Canadiens trade discussion. So, last time we had talked about Matt Mishkov, it was in this video right here, going over the updates as to how him and the Philadelphia Flyers could maybe be uniting very, very soon. And we had this idea in our minds when Mishkov was drafted that said, okay, this guy signed on with SKA in the KHL till 2026, so he's not gonna go over until then. We're gonna have to wait till he's in his early 20s, which is why he slipped in the draft in the first place. But the updates we had been getting talked about how the Philadelphia Flyers and SKA St. Petersburg were in cahoots. There was sort of this idea floating around saying, hey, these conversations between these two different hockey teams on varying sides of the world are progressing in a way that could allow Matvey Mishkov to leave Russia early and head over to the NHL as soon as this upcoming year. And that, of course, would be huge. In a way, Matvey Mishkov might have just bamboozled the entire NHL, because a lot of people last year were thinking, hey, he's not going to play until 2026, 2027 maybe. So what's the use in drafting him right now when we could get a guy that'll be amazing earlier? Philadelphia didn't care about that. They took him. And now, Mishkov could very well be on his way to Philly soon. With this in mind, let's go on to this article from DanLeCoulis.com talking about how this Mishkov thing relates to the Montreal Canadiens today. The article, which is in French and will be linked in the description, opens about how Philadelphia Flyers fans were delighted to learn earlier this week that Matvey Mishkov could join the team next season. We weren't expecting it so soon after all, because he's under contract with SKA. Danny Briere said they were going to be changes this summer because Philadelphia is rebuilding. With that said, Mark Antoine Godin said in the most recent episode of the So Hockey podcast that Matvey Mishkov's arrival could have a domino effect, bringing a guy like Travis Konechny or Joel Farabee onto the trade market. Mark Antoine Godin particularly talked about Farabee because, in his eyes, the American could please Kent use because of his style of play. Joel Farabee is a guy who, in my opinion, has the tools to interest the Canadians if the Habs want to make a trade. And with this in mind, we have an entire other discussion to go over Joel Farabee and whether or not he would be a certified addition for the Montreal Canadiens. This is interesting because if you take a look at Farabee, he kind of fits exactly what it is Kent Hughes would want. The article goes out there and talks about these same things, but I wanted to explain this in my own words here. Farabee is 24 years old, 6 feet, 183, left-handed guy, left winger too, signed on till the end of 2028, making $5 million a year. He was drafted by the Flyers in the 14th overall spot in 2018 and was the second top guy out of the NTDP that year. Because the first guy was Oliver Wallstrom, you had Jack Hughes, who also was a part of that team, but because this was 2017-18, Hughes was actually an underager. But Wallstrom with Farabee and Hughes, they formed a really strong top line, and Farabee eventually took his talents to Philly, where he rounded out as a pretty sustainable player the past few years. 
He had 30 points in multiple seasons in a row before having a 50-point campaign this year, scoring 22 goals and 28 assists. Now, the point-per-game number, you could actually say, might have been a bit better in earlier seasons, but still, Joel Farabee has been in a spot where, after progressing and then regressing a little bit and then progressing some more, he's now in a spot where he could very well be seen as a legitimate middle to top six talent on most NHL teams. You want to talk about what he does well, of course, the numbers stand out. He is a primary goal scorer. He can put the puck in the back of the net. And watching a lot of Philadelphia games this season, seeing what Farabee has been up to, he wasn't used as much as you could have say he should have been this season. I mean, even towards the end of the year, Faraby was being played 11 minutes a night, there were a ton of nights under 15 minutes, and then there was even one game where he had only 9. Of course, the Flyers were not really all too great towards the end of the season, but still, Joel Faraby, it's kind of hard to go out there and produce points when he's not really being played, which is why he only had himself one point in his final, what is that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 games of the regular season. So, if you remove the one point in 12 games, Joel Farabee, you could say, had himself 49 points in 70 games? That's a lot better of a point-per-game number, but it does beg the question as to whether or not the Flyers could consider moving on from Farabee. If they wanted to commit to some sort of a rebuild and say, alright, Farabee might be a bit too old for us to really start from scratch, where the new Matvey Mishkov era is going to take over, and if a guy like Mishkov is here right away, you need a winger spot for him to take. And Farabee, because he could probably fetch a significant haul in the market, might be the sacrifice here. As for the Montreal Canadiens, this article goes out there and proposes a top six of Slavkovsky, Suzuki, and Caulfield, Farabee, Doc, and Newhook. That seems like a fairly solid top six. Although, it does say here that Farabee commands $5 million a year, and his contract ends at the 27-28 season. So, there would only be what? four years of Farabee before you have to re-sign him. And to be honest, that's not like the worst thing in the world. I mean, that's half of a full-length deal at this time. So I don't necessarily think the contract is much of a problem, especially if Farabee is able to consistently produce, let's just say, let's be safe, 55 points a year in full 82 game capacity where he's actually being played and he's given significant minutes. That's a guy who I think is fairly worth 5 million bucks a year. And if the Philadelphia Flyers just have no use for him anymore, then why keep him? Like, there would be more reason for you to get some extra draft picks and draft capital and have Kent Hughes use one of his top round picks and maybe another defenseman to get a top score like Farabee onto the team. He fits the timeline. He is right in there, just a tad younger than Suzuki, just a tad older than Caulfield and Doc. So... There are a lot of things that align here, and it would all be because Matt Vemishkov decided to come over to the Philadelphia Flyers early, thus prompting the Flyers to think about whom it is on their roster they could ship out to free up that spot. So, big props out to Matt Vemishkov, everybody. Thank you so much for that. And, you know, I'll say this once more for the Philadelphia fans that are in here. I know y'all like Farabee. There's a good amount of love for this guy that has cultivated over the past few years, but it is understandable to see that with the Flyers' implosion towards the end of the year, this is not a playoff caliber team yet. The fact that you were even close was a miracle, and John Tortorella deserves all the props for that. But thinking about things now, if you're getting Matt Mishkov early and you need to trade up some guys to free up that space, is Farabee the main dude? Is it more so because you think you can get a lot of stuff for him rather than it's like, oh, he doesn't fit with the team or he's bad or he's this or he's that? It seems more so like a rebuilding perspective when I see Flyers fans talking about trading Farabee, not because they don't like him, but because this might just be right for the team. What is it from Montreal that would get you to say yes to a Farabee trade? Is it the first round pick from the Winnipeg Jets for the Sean Monaghan trade, as well as a left-handed defenseman? Or is it something else? Is there another prospect you like in the Canadian system? Habs fans, what do you think about the idea of trading for Joel Farabee? And how do you think the Matt Vemishkov thing is going to go down too? Is there some sort of a, I don't know, bitter towards this entire situation because I know a lot of Canadians fans wanted Mishkov and when he was passed on by Montreal there was sort of a resentment there that came up so it is kind of a weird situation but at the end of the day I think everybody can agree that Mishkov coming over to the NHL as soon as he can is a hundred percent best for business so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about how Matt V. Mishkov could be helping out the Montreal Canadiens and whether or not a Joel Farabee trade is possible I hope you enjoyed this British Ash Rolls 99 and bye.